Okay, uh, so let's start. Uh, so there is a, uh, I'd like to start with a clarification. Uh, so the clarification is as follows. So when we have a, this MOSFET and we were drawing this IGVG character, IDVGS characteristics and IDVDS characteristic, right? And let's assume that uh, the VDS is such that, let's start off with some values. Let's assume VDS is three volts, okay? And threshold voltage is one volt. And I start off with increasing VGS, okay? So I'm trying to plot IDS with respect to VGS. So till one volt, I should not get any current. So that much is pretty clear. So now when I start off from VTH, uh, when, I, when I move in this direction, right? What do you think will be the uh, state of the MOSFET? So VGS would be greater than VTH. Right, right. So, right. So, so when VT, when I am applying, when I am at VGS equal to VTH, so this voltage is one volt, and this voltage by definition is three volt, right? Assuming the other source is the reference, the source is the reference. So clearly, the transistor is in is in saturation, and the transistor will remain in saturation till when, if I keep on increasing VGS, the transistor will remain in saturation till this goes to four volt. Right, it is only when the gate voltage goes one threshold voltage above drain, your transistor goes out of saturation. Make sense? So, which means that in the IDVGS curve, it will look like a what linear line or a parabola? Parabola, right? It should look like a parabola. And then what happens if I keep on increasing VGS beyond four volt? Let's say this is four volt. Then it will go to linear region and the line will be a straight line, right? So reason I, uh, I mean, so this is this equation of of mu n c ox w by l EGS minus v t whole squared, and this will be that mu n c ox w over l is v g s minus v t times v d s minus half of VDS squared. Right. So, you know, try to be a bit cleaner. Okay. So the reason I uh, said this is a clarification because I think in one of the lectures, two or three lectures before this, we started off with the assumption of linear because I said that it will start off with VDS to be in linear. But in that case, once a transistor gets into linear region, it cannot come back to saturation if you keep on increasing VGS, right? So that's the clarification that I would like to uh, start off. Okay, fine. Now, now, I have posted a tutorial. How many of you have taken a look? Okay. So good. Uh, one of the one of the questions that you will see there, which is related to what I would like to point out here, is the fact that uh, the amplifier that we were after, right? Huh. So what is the gain of this amplifier between VI and V0? Yeah. V0 over VI was, it cannot be GMVI, right? What is the unit of GMVI? Okay. Yeah, GMRL, right? GMVI is current. So this is minus GM times RL. Okay, so now uh, this, uh, what is GM? If I express GM in terms of the quiescent parameters, what will be GM? This will be minus mu n c ox W over L 
EGSQ minus threshold voltage times RL with a gain, right? So what are your design parameters? Let's assume that RL is given. Mu and C of C cannot change. What are your design parameters? W over L and? VGS, VGSQ rather, right? Where are you biased it at, right? Threshold voltage to a large extent is also not in your control. So, which means that these are the two things you can play with. And VGSQ minus VTH, we call it as overdrive. So, essentially, my gain in this case, in this particular architecture, gain is proportional to W by L times the V overdrive. Everything else you cannot change, right? Which is either fixed by the device or given by the specifications, you cannot change. So, if we are fixing certain gain, right? Let's say gain of 10, 20, 5, whatever. So, how many ways you can achieve a gain as a designer, that gain? Looking into the equation, what do you think? So, let's say assume you want to get a gain of 10, okay? Or minus 10, that's it. So, so you want a gain of minus 10. So target gain minus 10, right? So you will put back minus 10 in that equation and what you will get? You will get W by 10 is equal to some U N C ox times R L times W by L times V over drive, right? So as a designer, you have to make a choice that these are the two design variables, right? The multiplication of these two variables is giving me certain number. So which, how many possibilities do you have? Why? So we can say W, we can say less or we can say over So, but we cannot say over the components. Right, but let's assume W by L is a, uh, uh, I mean, let's assume you have fixed the length, okay? So you have two design handles. You have two design handles. One is W, or let's call it W by L as a fixed thing, and one is overdrive. So when you multiply two things and you get a number, and I ask you that how many constants are there and how many possible solutions are there? Do you, this, is, it a, is it a case of infinite solution case or no solution case? Okay. So if I tell you X times Y equal to 10, how many possibilities of X and Y are there? How many solutions? Infinite solutions. This is this looks to be a similar situation, right? You have two design variables. You are multiplying those two, and you are getting certain number. So, in principle, how many uh, uh, how many choices you can possibly make, assuming that all these are continuous variables, infinite. But as he pointed out, that is it truly infinite because you have certain other constraints to play with. So, VGS right. So, in principle, can you increase V overdrive to infinity? No, you cannot even increase V overdrive beyond maybe one threshold voltage above or VGS to be one threshold voltage above the drain. Or, in other words, you cannot increase V overdrive beyond the drain voltage. Right? So, so that gives you an upper limit of the constraint. Do you agree? Okay, rest of you. Okay, uh, what is the lower limit? The lower limit is, so the upper limit is, so upper limit of V overdrive, V overdrive or VGSQ is limited by, one second, limited by M1 going into Triode region. Okay, so there is an upper ceiling. Question? Okay. So, what is the lower limit of V overdrive determined by? What, what happens if I keep on decreasing V overdrive? Can I go to V overdrive equal to zero? Yeah, so can, I, can, I can go to V overdrive just above zero, right? Because by our, this model is valid, valid only when the transistor is on. If the transistor is not on, this model is invalid. 
and by with respect to the uh, with respect to the small signal model i mean incremental quiescent plus incremental model that we talked about can you comment on uh, can you comment on uh, how will i how will i figure out what is the minimum p overdrive yes so v, i mean i can also say v overdrive quiescent right so there will be a minimum vgsq and how you figure that vgsq you will set the total current at in, through the transistor to be zero right so what is total current total current so let me write it down so lower v overdrive or vgsq in the sense that because upper limit of v overdrive or VGSQ is essentially, I mean, it's essentially the same offset by one central voltage. Right? When you are trying to figure out uh, what will be the minimum or the maxima, you can either figure out for V overdrive and add a threshold voltage to it or directly find out VGSQ. Doesn't really matter. Okay. So uh, for the lower limit, what will you do? For the lower limit, you will do the total current, right? So set total current to zero for finding minimum VGSQ. Does that make sense? And when I say total current to zero, what do you mean? In the one, I mean, again, one might argue that I'll set the total current to zero by just saying that VGSQ equal to threshold voltage, right? That's the full model that is given. Uh, if, you, if you take the full blown model of your transistor, Right, in saturation, it tells you that as long as VGSQ is greater than threshold voltage, you have current. Below threshold voltage, you don't have any current, which is in fact true. But we saw in the last class that even though that is true, that is an unusable truth. Right, because your 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 quiescent point will go so much off that your transistor will start getting distorted, or rather, waveforms will start getting distorted, which means we need a better model to better model for a linear amplification. And the better model was we will linearize the total current around the operating point. And that was what? How will you find? You will say that the total current ID huh, that's what I'm trying to get at. When you say lower limit of VGSQ equal to VT, VTH, you are essentially saying that I'm waiting for the transistor to fully cut off physically, which is true. Transistor fully cuts off physically, but we are also interested in operating the transistor in such a way that our signal doesn't get distorted too much, right? So, uh, so essentially, if you if I go here, what we are saying is that we want to stay away from this point. Correct. So, if I bias it, let's say we are biasing it somewhere here. So, in principle, what you are saying is right. I can go all the way till here. And then the transistor cuts off. Okay. But since we want to stay away from that point, we still want to use a linearized equivalent. What is our linearized equivalent? Our linearized equivalent is I draw a tangent at this line around that point and see where this, this line through the tangent cuts the x-axis. Right. So that is the total current using our linearized model. And what is that total current? That total current is nothing but your initial current IDSQ plus GM times VI or other, yeah, GM times VP, if you are using a sine omega T plus G, or GM times VI, and then you set it to zero. From this, you will get another limit. Okay. Or I should, in case of a transistor, I should say GM times VGS. GM times VGS of that particular transistor to be zero. And this will give you another limit. And VGS will be a function of VGS will be some function of V in. In our case, in the in the case that we have been dealing with, our VGS is exactly equal to V in. Right? So this is my VGS. In the incremental sense, VGS is equal to VI. Make sense? 
So in most of the problems that you'll see in the tutorial, you'll see that VGS is equal to VI. Okay. But there is there are a couple of problems. I think one problem in the end, you will see that there is something attached. There is something attached here. And you are applying a VI here. And you have something here. So this is the gate, source, drain, right? So if this is the case, how will you approach such a problem? Anything can be attached to the source. So the approach is same, exactly the same, right? So what will be the first approach? Let's say you are faced with a circuit like this. What is the first thing that you will need to figure out? Fine, so you'll have to assume that in saturation and then do your calculation and see whether it is indeed in saturation, right? So for that, which model will you use? The small signal model or the full-blown model? Full, full, full. You have to use the full-blown model of transistor equations, right? So step one will be find operating point. Using nonlinear models, nonlinear equations. What will be step two? Uh, if it is in saturation region, then we can uh, change the uh, MOSFET to the small signal characteristics. Right. No, you can always change the MOSFET to a small signal characteristics. Even in linear region, it has a small signal characteristic, just that you cannot amplify, right? So you can always do that. So the step two will be find the, replace the, replace the device with its incremental equivalent. And then what is the purpose of incremental equivalent? The purpose of incremental equivalent is to figure out how the corresponding source drain gate voltages change when I apply a uh, increment, right? So, so find the increments in, or rather simply, I should say find incremental gain, or right, find small signal gain, or rather small signal currents and voltages. at all terminals, at or through, depending on your voltage or current, right? So what I'm, what I'm essentially saying, I'm saying that using incremental model, you have to find VG, VD, VS, IDS, okay? From the first bullet point, you would have gotten VG, VS, VD and IDS, IDS Q. I mean, if you think that in, these are all quiescent, these are all subscript will be Q, but I mean, as long as you keep capital letters, then it's implied. So now after you've gone through all these three steps, how will you find out the limits to which your signals can swing? What is the strategy? After you have found all this, like incremental swings, total voltages, how will you figure out what will be the strategy for any circuit? What will be the strategy to figure out how much can my signal swing before my transistor goes out of saturation or goes into cutoff? Exactly, right? For So one case is, so, so there are two cases. One case is set total ID to zero, i.e. IDS plus small IDS to be equal to zero. This will give you one constraint. This will give you one constraint. And the second constraint is, or find or set, find the condition when VD, total VD becomes just less than equal to, or you can simply say equal to, Total VG minus the threshold voltage. 
Right. So these are the same condition for that particular architecture, right? But given any architecture, this is the principle, right? These constraints might change, but the algorithm doesn't, right? So you have to do all these steps for any circuit that you see. Yes. So this will, uh, if you set total ID to zero, that is twice and plus incremental. So this gives you a lower limit of how much the signal can swing across the VGS of the tunnel. Correct. This will give you a lower limit for the current, but what? But ultimately, what is the goal? The goal is to figure out maybe you have some signal swinging somewhere in the in your circuit. I need to figure out what is as a designer. I need to figure out what is the maximum amplitude of the signal I can give, which means the signal is going up, going down, right? So out of either going up or going down, out of one of those two will be affecting the either the transistor is going into saturation, out of saturation, or going into cutoff, right? So the in this particular architecture, the input going down will affect the transistor going into cutoff. Correct? Right? So in this particular architecture, if my total ID is ID plus, so what will be the total ID in this case? If, if you have to figure, if you have to write with in terms of the variables that are there, how will you write? No, ID is, GMBI. no, it's not GMBI. Why do you say GMBI? Pardon? Correct, Poisson current, I have figured out, let's say. Right, so I have figured out Poisson current by doing nonlinear analysis. What is the incremental current? GM times? No, it's not VI. Why VI? So what will be the? Uh, VGS. It will be VGS. It's it is always VGS. It's always VGS. It's VI if source is grounded. Okay, so that is also a very important aspect to. These, these architectures. We started off with assuming source to be grounded, but it's not necessarily be the case. Source is a terminal that is accessible, which means you can put something there. It need not necessarily be the source is always grounded. So this has to be set to zero. Total ID, like, what are the IDs of function of time? Yeah, it will be a function of time, right? Yeah, so, the minimum of ID. Correct, right. So then the minimum of that will go to zero. So in this particular case, look at this. What will happen if when if I concentrate on the gate voltage, right? If I concentrate on the gate voltage, your input is going up and down, right? So when gate goes, when gate goes in, when when the gate goes to the negative half cycle, right? So what do you think is a transistor getting turned off or getting turned on? More, it's going more into linear or going more into cutoff? Close to cutoff. Cut and in terms of currents, what is meant by things going to cutoff, which means current is ID equal to zero. Right? So, how do you set ID equal to zero in your calculation? You find out the quiescent, you find out incremental, add those two up, set this to zero, you will get a constraint. Make sense? Okay. So, now, uh, Let's assume that you have found these two constraints. One is the maximum that VI can swing while uh, keeping the transistor in saturation. And another one is VI can swing below, how much it can go below to uh, uh, till your transistor goes, uh, remains in on, right? Goes into cutoff. And out of those two, you get two different numbers. So what is the maximum sign? What is the maximum input amplitude of the sine wave that you can apply while respecting both the conditions? It will be the minimum of two, right? So for let's assume you have done this, uh, you have done this uh, experiment or done the analysis and figured out that the maximum input amplitude can you can give is 100 millivolt max, and the minimum is 50 millivolt for a sine wave, right? So, which essentially means that the if this, which essentially means that if you apply a hundred millivolt sinusoid, the plus half cycle will be fine, but the 
negative half cycle will get flipped so that is not something that is acceptable right so however if you apply a sine wave of 50 millivolt right if you apply a sine wave of 50 millivolt then the negative half cycle will pass and the positive half cycle will anyways pass because for the positive half cycle the limit was 100 millivolt right yes Ah, huh, where is the lower bound coming from? In this particular architecture, from where will the lower bound come? Why don't you tell me? I just plucked out a number. You have to you have to do the calculation for a particular circuit and then you will get a number. Right. Right. But why is that lower bound? Okay, why is there a lower bound? So if they if if your input is decreasing, what is happening to the current? Decreasing, right? Correct, right? So if 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 I plot if I plot the so let's assume. So let's say your input is going like this, right? So let's say this is VI, right? So this is VP sine omega t. Okay. So this is VI and it's not necessarily that the VGS will be exactly equal to VI, right? VGS will be equal to VI only when source is grounded, right? So let's say VGS is not VI, but some alpha times VI, some factor of VI. So let's say this, v, this v, VGS is something like this. Let's say this is VGS. So these, are these are incremental, these are incremental, right? So now what will be the current for this particular VGS uh, that we see? It will be GM times VGS, not GM times VI, GM times VGS. So when I say GM times VGS, your current will probably go like something like this. And your current is moving on top of quiescent, right? So quiescent is this dotted line. Correct. So, what is the total current that is flowing through the transistor? Summation of IDSQ and the so this this is GM times V GS, right? So, when is the total current going to minima? Here, right? So, this is so essentially this point here is IDSQ minus gm times vgs max right so when you say that i am trying to figure out the limit to which my transistor i mean signals can swing what am i doing i am saying that i will set this to zero because that essentially means that in the total idvd characteristics your total current in the transistor is hitting zero one second huh? yeah that is that I know IDSQ minus GMVS has to be greater than equal to zero. Fine. Correct. Then I get the upper limit on you, VGS. You get a upper limit in the negative half cycle. Right? You get two limits. One is when signal swings below, and the another is signal swings so this above. VGS max is a positive value. This VGS max is a positive value. That's correct. Okay, okay, okay. Now I understand what you are saying. Yeah, in the truest sense, if you are talking about that whether VGS has increased or no, yes, in that case, I agree. It will you will be an upper bound of VGS because uh okay, hold on, hold on. I think I am so when you say it's an upper bound, in both cases you are getting. Uh, a bounding limit, correct? So, when you say upper bound, do you mean that? Sir, upper bound of the amplitude of. Correct, but the amplitude is determined by the minima of the of the thrust and the trough, right? So, what I am trying to get at here is that when this this condition appears only when VGS goes below quiescent, right? It's only when your input is swinging below, correct? 
So using this constraint, you will get one condition. So you call it an upper bound, lower bound, doesn't matter. You get a condition. You get a condition on the signals, how much the signal, maximum the signal can go below your quiescent, right? That is a maxima in, in one sense. But if you say I am doing the full blown analysis, then clearly this is a minima. But in the truest sense, you can say that this is the maximum I can go below my quiescent. So you're getting one maxima in the negative direction, correct? In the other, in the other half cycle, in the first half cycle, you are getting a maxima in the positive half direction. Do you agree? Here, in this sub cycle, current limiting is not a problem anymore, but the maximum signal swing that you can go is a problem, right? From there, you get another constraint. And if in a properly designed circuit, these two constraints should match, right? Which means that your signal can swing as much high as it can swing low, while just clipping the current and on the other side, just getting to the edge of saturation. Right? Otherwise, you are leaving, you are leaving headroom. You are leaving uh, space for the signal to swing. Did, did that make sense? What I am trying to get at here is that, let's assume you have a common source, you have the uh, amplifier. By the way, another set of terminology, the amplifier that we had been studying in the last class or last couple of classes, in a small signal picture, in the small signal picture, the so your increment is, you're, you're applying the input between gate and source and you are get, taking the output between drain and source in the incremental picture. So source is common between the input and the output. So it's called a common source amplifier. A CS stage. And this is similar to the common emitter that you have studied in ESC201. Uh, so in, case, in this case of a common source amplifier, when the signal goes high, let's say, assume that this is at, again, let's take some values. This is two volt uh, quiescent threshold voltage of one volt. Right. And let's say VDD is equal to 5 volt. And you have found some, and this RL equal to 1K. And your uh, mu N C ox W by L, L is equal to 2 milliamp per volt square. Okay. Or let's say mu, mu N C ox is 200 microamp per volt square. And you have a choice of W by L. Okay. So you have a choice of W by L, let's say. And, and you chose W by L to be equal to 10. And you chose the quiescent input voltage to be 2 volt. These are the design choices you made. Let's assume. So in this, in this set of design choices, it's clear that there is, I mean, from this, whatever I have given you, how will you figure out what is the maximum input uh, if this input is a sinusoid? What is the maximum VP that you can apply? What is, what is the strategy? What will you do? Two conditions, right? So one condition, you will see that when input goes high, I know the output goes below, low, right? Input will go, this is two volt, and this is VP. The output will go from quiescent. What is quiescent? Quiescent will be VDD minus IDRL. And this will be, what will this be? In terms of parameters, what will that be? GM times RL times VP, right? So I'm assuming that you have, you have done the calculations for twice and points, all these values are known. GM is known, RL is known, VP is given, or VP you are trying to figure out. So what is the maximum VP that you can get? From this particular uh, structure, you will, you will essentially set that the total drain voltage, which is VDD minus IDRL minus GM RL times VP minus threshold voltage, uh, sorry, strain voltage should be equal to total gate, total gate voltage, that is 2 volt plus VP minus threshold voltage. 
right? So this is setting total VDS to be equal to total VGS minus special voltage. From there, you get a value of VP. And this is the value of VP that you will get for the signal swinging up, okay? One constraint, let's say this gives me VP1, right? So, so from, I get VP1 from here. I think the coefficient point in this video basically would be EDD minus ITRL is equal to Exactly. And ID will substitute that formula. Exactly. Exactly. The quadratic will come and the quadratics are easy to solve. And this is exactly what we will do in the tutorial question. And then uh, while going, while, while we are going in the negative direction, while the signal is swinging in the negative direction, what is happening? I don't have to look into the drain voltage anymore because why? That when things go, when gate decreases, the drain voltage is increasing and I am going more and more into saturation, right? So I don't have to worry about saturation condition anymore, but I have to worry about something else, ID going to zero, right? So then I'll, what will be the total ID in that? The total ID is always there. Does that we don't we are not looking at it under certain condition and we are looking at it in certain, certain other condition. Total ID will be you have found out ID from your total nonlinear analysis, ID plus GM times VI. But when signal goes low and we are trying to figure out the max, I mean how low you can go, what will you replace VI with? This is VP in the opposite direction, right? This is VP in the opposite direction. So what will you replace this plus GM times VI with? Minus VI, minus GM times VP, right? Minus GM times VP. So you will get another condition where ID minus GM times VP equal to zero. And let's call this VP, VP2. And for any arbitrarily designed circuit, there is no reason to believe that VP1 will be equal to VP2, right? Two different constraints coming from two different uh, phenomena, okay? So if you are to stop at here, then you would say that the maximum sinusoid, maximum amplitude of the sinusoid that I can apply will be minimum of VP1 and VP2, so that the transistor neither goes out of saturation region nor goes out of nor goes into cutoff, right? So your VP applic applicable VP max max will be minimum of VP one and VP two. Yes. How did you ensure? So your system is. Under what condition the system is more likely to go out of saturation when the input is swinging high? In this particular case, the input is swinging low. In the magenta case or in the green case? No, right? What is in the green case, your, your gate voltage is going down. Drain voltage is going up. Right? It's, I have a negative gain. That's what negative gain means. I'm going more and more into saturation. That's good. As far as that concept is concerned. Okay. No, no, hold on. There are two questions here. Uh, his question is, how did I write this equation? Which circuits are not connected? Why is it not connected? I didn't understand the question. <laughs> Okay, so this VDD minus ITRL is what? What did I put this? Yes, I have to apply the input. This is zero. So what is the VDD minus ITRL? Okay, so this is zero. So what is the VDD minus ITRL? So what is the VDD minus ITRL? VDD 
VDD is here. You have current of ID flowing through RL. So what is VDD minus ID RL? Okay, if you have a problem, I think many rest of the class will also probably having a problem. So what is anybody, what is not you guys? What is VDD minus IDRL? It is a drain voltage, right? So you have VDD, you have RL, you have current ID flowing. So what is this voltage? VDD minus ID times RL. Make sense? So this is in the absence of input, right? Now, this voltage is what is the right? By one side, it will be changed by the A times the input voltage, right? So now this voltage started from the design side, just to ensure that under Poison condition it is But now, to deal with the fact that your signal that is coming is not disturbing your uh, saturation state, right? Now, as a designer, we have to figure out how much can I be off. How do I do I find it just the age of saturation? Then like the amount of signal will pull my transistor out of saturation. Or do I give some uh, swing limit? Right? Do I give it some allowance to swing? It's still a exactly. It's a limit If you buy it just at the age of saturation, then the limit upper limit is zero. You apply the slightest amount of input transistor goes out of saturation. Right, but that is not that you that is that you want. Yes. Exactly. So this is one case. The other case is when the input goes low. When the input goes low, how much is high? No problem with saturation. But the problem is the current. The total current is reducing, and how much can it reduce to? It can reduce to zero. Right. So total is quite different for like. And it's because now input is going low, my total current is reducing. And in how much can it reduce by GM current? Right? Then I set that to zero. And I get another condition. Now, note that these two conditions, this DMA, need not be the same because we didn't take care of it to start up. Okay. For any arbitrary design circuit, these two conditions need not be the same. So, if that is the case, if that is the case, then what is the maximum sinusoid that you can apply? It will be the minimum of VP1 and VP2. That is the two constraints that you came up with. If you if you if you design it before the if you, if you apply sinusoid which is let's say max of VP1 and VP2, then either it will be cut off or it will go into saturation. Now here comes the role of the designer. When you are designing, you cannot be just satisfied with this is what I got, leave it there. You will have to ensure that. While maintaining the gain, what is the maximum sine wave that I can apply? So as to ensure that it doesn't neither cuts off nor goes out of gain. Yes, your system will always work, but your system has to work for the maximum amount of input that you are applying. Right? So which essentially means that what how will you how will you bias how will you bias your circuit to ensure that VP1 is equal to VP2? What will be a thought process or the calculation process? What will you do? Exactly, right? So these two conditions that you got, these values of VP that you got is a function of Poisson conditions. Correct? They are functions of Poisson conditions. Your VM is a function of Poisson conditions. This can only be in the one that matters, right? Yeah, VM is and VDD is given. I will use those because of something, right? So why is the ID minus VPP? How are you assuming that the circuit is that very linear incremental whatever? I am not assuming. I am saying that given that it is, you have designed a proper circuit. VPP is not we are going tangentially. Correct. So I am going tangentially till the point I am going cutting this one. So so here is another thing about design. You cannot start off with any start off thinking that I will set solve a set of linear equations and then come to a conclusion. You have to go the other way around. You have to start from conclusion and assume that circuit works. And then assuming that the circuit works, you figure out the parameters. Right? It's, it's another mindset. It's the synthesis mindset, right? You have to start off assuming circuit works and then you figure out the parameters. So here we are assuming that 
it's a saturation because that's all at least it has to be saturated. And then you try to figure out whether it works or not. Okay. So now as a designer, so now why am I saying all these things? So so note that you got you in this case, you got a set of constraints that gives you the same gain. In this particular case, you got W by L times V over drive was giving you a gain of 10. But there's a range of W by L and V over drive which can give you a gain of 10. Which one will you choose? You need another constraint. This is one equation. You need another constraint. The, if I tell you to choose the constraint for which you can apply the maximum sine wave without clipping, without going with the, without the transistor going into cut off or out of saturation medium, that gives you another constraint. Right? So this is one constraint. And you will get this, you will from this maximum minima condition, you will get another constraint. You get those two, you will get the maximum amplitude of the sine wave that you can apply. Okay. So do you agree with the fact that there are more than one solutions if I leave it here? Right. So now the question is as a designer, which solution is more palatable? Which one would I? Would I like to bias it close to edge of saturation or close to edge of cutoff or somewhere else? Because this condition, W I L times GOB equal to 10 by T of R L gives you a range. And given that this is a continuous variable, it gives you infinite possibilities. Okay. So if you have infinite possibilities as a designer, what will you do? And why will you do? Right? Now let assuming that you input the sign of point. How will you choose? You will choose if you satisfy that you are neither too close to cut off nor at least not too close to linear. It is under only that condition you can get, you can allow the sign wave to move both in the positive and the negative direction without getting clipped off. Right? So, if that is the case, in mathematically, how do you figure out? You will then say that I will figure out what is DP max going into the positive direction, what is DP mean? Or other DP max going into the negative direction, and I will see what Poisson condition gives me DP max equal to DP mean, or DP one equal to DP two, and that from there I put another constraint on the bias, on the Poisson condition. So, if it is this one more for the inter integral, what's maximum? Even now we get an addition for the Poisson, there may be any difference. This is the way for Poisson only, right? So, so this one, the the one you already evaluated. Uh huh. Yes, that is for the incremental input. But how does the incremental input affect your transistor? Right? How is it affecting the total the operating conditions of the transistor? That is something you have to take into account. Right? Now see, your transit, I mean, as far as analyzing your is concerned, you are removing, uh, you are shorting voltage sources, you are removing transistors, putting in the small signal model, but your transistor really doesn't care. How does it know what you are doing? Right? So it only knows that whether it's in it's in the application after you have applied the input that is, that is bias plus input including both whether it is in saturation or not. That's the only thing that transistor cares. Okay. So how in terms of analysis, how will you do? How will you do the analysis? We are designing a framework to ensure that we don't get bogged down with these nonlinear equations too much. We will figure out the Poisson condition by solving the nonlinear equation once, and then we will figure out the incremental conditions using incremental model and club those two. While plugging those two, we will ensure that uh, not ensure while after plugging those two, we will impose the condition of saturation or cutoff and see what is the function that we get. Does that make sense? Okay. So one of the questions in the tutorial, I will ask you to do exactly that. So that is why I wanted to spend this class on this. Okay. Make sense? Any questions? Okay. 